Hey YouTube, Danae here. I know it's been a while since my last video. Life got busy. I'm, I'm not gonna go into it. Just life got busy. I had to stop vlogging for a while because life was busy. I'm now trying to get back into vlogging. So if this looks like I'm new at all this, it's because I kind of am again. Anyway, I hope you'll all bear with me. Uh, in my last video, I left a question unanswered, and that was, how do you get the ideas for your stories? So, today I'm going to try and answer that, and it, it's a little tricky. It's been a while, and in all this time that I haven't been recording videos, I actually don't have a straight answer for that question. I don't really get the ideas for my stories from, like, one consistent source. They come from just all sorts of different sources and just I, sometimes random thought processes or just completely random thoughts. Like, my subconscious will just go, hey, hey, this would be a cool story idea. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. And honestly, most of the time, whenever the random idea pops into my head like that, I don't have a pen and paper. So it's not terribly helpful. Still, when the ideas aren't coming randomly and out of the blue and I have no way to write them down, I do have one or two semi-reliable methods that I sometimes use. One of them, um, it's more a method for getting out of writer's block than it is for starting a new story idea, but it could be adapted for either one. It's what I like to call the what-if scenario. And what I do is I take the part that I'm stuck at in the story, or I take, like, a character that I know really, really well, and I come up with just a random what-if. Like, the character's supposed to do action A, but what if he does action B instead? And then I write out that scene. I write out what would happen if the character were to do something other than what the storyline says that they're supposed to. And... What I write for that may never get past my first edit. I may write it and then just immediately delete it and dive back into the actual storyline. But it's a way to get the words moving again. And I found that it's actually incredibly, incredibly effective, for me at least. It just, it, it works really well. Um, when I'm not doing the what if uh, scenario, I, like I said, a lot of it's really just random ideas that pop into my head. Another thing that I like to do is... Um, well, it's, it's that old cliche advice of write what you know. I, I read an article online once that if I happen to stumble across it again, I'll link to it down below. I just, I don't know where it is right now. So it's out there somewhere in the interwebs. And it talks about writing what you know and how most writers don't interpret that advice correctly. Like according to the rules, so to speak, of the advice, write what you know. The only thing I would ever be able to write would be about 20-something college graduates working two jobs and living in the middle of a very small town in central Texas, and that's just not true. I can write about anything I want. My imagination is the only limit. What write what you know actually means, according to this article, is you take the emotions and the experiences that you've had, you take the way you felt during those experiences, and you put that into your writing. And because you're writing about real emotions and basing those emotions off of real experiences and things that you've dealt with, it'll make the words, it'll make what you've written come across better for the reader. It'll make the words ring true. It'll make your readers able to relate better to what you're writing and relate better to your characters. Um, for example, I have never been, say, homeless. I've, I've never been homeless. I've never not had a roof over my head. But I've been incredibly hungry at times. I've been incredibly cold at times, once to the point where I was in tears because it was so cold out. I have been in situations before where I knew that I just, I didn't belong. I knew that everybody else was kind of looking down on me. And if I chose, I could take all of those experiences, all of those feelings, all of those emotions, and combine them to write about something I've never experienced, i.e. being homeless, my example. 
So, yeah, um, that's a few of the pieces of advice that I have in terms of places to start when you're writing. Uh, you could also check out newspaper articles, headlines, and again, get ideas from what's happening in real life. Not necessarily your life. You can use things from the lives of others and adapt it. That's me getting back into vlogging and talking a little bit about my writing. So hopefully I will see everyone tomorrow. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please leave it in comments. Like if you thought the video was worthy. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you'll know when I make another video and upload it. And yeah, everybody have an awesome day. I'm gonna go get some chores done. Bye.